10 things I strongly dislike about Tank 300. Yes, there are 10 legitimate things that you need to be aware of before you fork out a substantial amount of cash for this car in Australia or any other country in the world. I've been reviewing Tank 300 and other cars for a long time and Tank 300 specifically was a focal point for this channel. Like I was very, very interested in it. I was reviewing and, and translating videos from overseas channels because they had these vehicles there for longer than we had them here in Australia. So in other words, all in all, my friends, I know a lot about this car from the feedback I received from you, from the other research that I've done from all over the internet, yeah, and from my own test driving of different models, not just this HEV model, but the petrol model that came here first. Anyway, 10 things that I think are, to be honest with you, rather stupid, okay? And you need to know about them, even if you decide to get this car, because I still think that it's value for money, okay? It's value for money. Just spoiler alert, not HEV, uh, yeah. so. Join me on this little journey and uh, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more similar videos in case you are not subscribed already. Just before we keep going, let me remind you that this video is very kindly sponsored by my friends Firebok. Firebok are creators of premium style and quality technical and plain clothing. They have shirts, they have pants, they have hoodies, they have jackets, you name it. It's a really, really wonderful quality stuff. It's not cheap but the quality makes it absolutely worth it. It is really, really amazing. Please check out the sponsors. I'm very grateful to Firebox for sending me some of this stuff and offer you a 20% discount on the stuff. Consider that 20% discount with my code and the link in the description of the video. Let's talk about Tank 300. In no particular order, starting with item number one on my list of things that I find rather stupid or tone deaf, is that GWM decided not to bring any diesel or V6 versions of Tank 300 and Tank 500 for that matter into Australia. This is very weird and they're missing the mark here with the underpowered petrol 2.0 liter turbo petrol engine. Again, no diesel. We only have these petrol ones and the HEV ones, which we will talk about in a minute and a little bit separately. We're missing the mark here, JWM, because these vehicles are bought by the off-road enthusiasts, the ones that are simply expecting an engine that can be a diesel guzzler, that can be refueled anywhere in the middle of Australia and that kind of stuff. Especially, additionally to that, we expect to be towing quite a lot with these vehicles. I, I don't personally. For me, as a city dweller, it's not a problem. But for majority of people who are buying this vehicle for a specific purpose, it is an issue. And in my humble opinion, it's rather stupid. And GWM simply missed the mark on market research over here. Without dwelling too much on number one, we will move to point number two. That the HEV model, the closed circuit hybrid model of Tank 300, is turns out to not be saving you too much petrol while costing you at the entry level of Lux Hybrid at the moment of recording of this video about 6,000 Australian dollars more than the entry Lux model of the petrol version. Why would you buy hybrid? You would buy hybrid primarily, let's, let's not argue about this, primarily to save on petrol, don't you? Primarily to make your ride more efficient. Well, my friends, I am hearing reports, slightly mixed reports, but they are sort of all agreeing on the fact that it is not something that you would expect from a hybrid Toyota, where suddenly your 8 liters per 100 kilometers turn into 4.5. So we are not seeing numbers like this here. We are seeing something in the ballpark of 12, 13 liters of petrol per 100 kilometers in city driving with air conditioning, even on HEV model. That once again is uh, much more expensive. And we will talk about expensive, how expensive it is in the point number three. Another thing which I find stupid is the price point positioning of these vehicles on Australian shores. I will allow them to have the petrol version of Lux, the entry level, at 47,990, which is a competitive price for a very capable off-roader. Let's give them that. That's fine. However, when we start looking at Lux Hybrid, which starts, pricing starts from almost 54,000 Australian dollars, 53,990, and the ultra hybrid version of tank 300 is 58,990. That's almost 60 grand, my friends. That's no small change, considering that tank 300 l limits the amount of use by the larger families. It has insufficient amount of interior space, arguably, 
for proper camping and other kind of things yada 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 we will get to that a little later in this video this is very very tone deaf pricing once again uh why am i saying that uh, if you're not convinced yet because if we specifically talk about ultra hybrid version yes it's a slightly more lifted version from the inside and all that kind of stuff but it's not like it suddenly turns into a rolls royce it's far from that but 58,990, which is almost once again almost 60 grand it is climbing too high because a much larger a much more family friendly also very off-road capable vehicle of tank 500 which has its own flaws we will talk about them in another video but it is a lot more roomy it kind of justifies a higher price tag so that tank 500 in the in the entry level of lux hybrid starts from 66 490 that's only and in this case i'm going to say only five thousand dollars more expensive than ultra hybrid price point of tank 300 so once again too many numbers i'm throwing at you i'm going to stop in a second but my point is that i find it stupid that gwm positioned the top of the range tank 300 uh kind of too close i would dare say too close for the entry level of 500 i think they're shooting themselves in the foot and not doing anyone any favors i don't think and i by the way just word of mouth kind of stuff not proven data just yet please let's not lock this in but i'm hearing through the grapevine that they are not selling too many of those ultra hybrid tank 300s for a good reason for a good reason point number four is not something that i have tested personally and not something that i have personally paid too much attention to because i'm a careful driver and i understand that tank 300 is built like a heavy box on wheels so should be driven accordingly but other respectable channels that i have to give a nod here too as a as fellow content creator on uh, in the australian youtube space uh, they are reporting that the braking system of tank 300 is no, not tuned appropriately for australia some claim that the and apparently there is proof as well let's not argue that point that the rear wheels of the vehicle briefly even lift off the ground when you are braking and not even going very very fast but like in about 60 kilometer zone that is admittedly unacceptable i never defended that point all i was defending is the fact that any box on wheels massive vehicle jeep that kind of stuff would probably have similar if not identical braking issues but it is still i think a little on the borderline of unacceptability in australia so i think gwm should have done better with tuning this vehicle a little bit you know for less criticism less things being thrown at them right right now because it's hard to defend them even as a kind of fan of the brand from the perspective of i want the underdog to have a chance i want a good competitive vehicles on our market which gwm again is bringing with tank 300 but let's keep going with this list because there is more to say number five is the obnoxious and unnecessary in my humble opinion visually and construction wise the i'm a wannabe fighter jet pilot and a secret admirer of optimus prime gear shifter wouldn't you say that this massive whatever it is knob uh, is rather obnoxious and unnecessary first of all it occupies too much space they could have gotten away with a nice humble kind of rotary gear shifter of haval h6 which i became a big fan of after owning the vehicle for a little bit of time but they have gone with this massive unnecessary obnoxious again visually thing i think this is probably the winner if we ran a like a winner's list rather than just a generic list of the stupid features of tank 300 this is absolutely up there it's just ridiculous come on they didn't need to do that i am not a fan number six the excessively futuristic and unnecessarily cluttered complex uh, not refined enough instruments cluster digital instruments cluster i think that it is not emphasizing and almost hiding the most important thing your speed and revs it should be front and center massive that's it that's all we really need especially considering who you're building this car for it's avid off-roaders it's bad weather conditions usually it's that kind of stuff it's not some kind of fancy schmancy tesla riders that need to impress themselves and their refined uh, passengers with uh, i don't know rot rotary planets and other kind of decorative crap that we don't need on the screen want to want to think what uh, like want me to say what i think is a great example also from gwm like also in favor of gwm let's give them credit they have access to a great digital cluster that i have seen in canon x ute 
uh, I have seen it, I have praised it in that review. I think that they don't even need to go too far before you start going off at me and saying, Dimitri, but what do you have in mind? Mate, I have a specific example that is in their IP wheelhouse. They just need to put it here into tank 300 and the whole car is going to feel a lot better, feel a lot uh, less try hard and a lot more fit for purpose. That's my humble opinion. Number seven, this let's call it free hanging blinker stalk that does not fixate in one position and needs rather delicate uh, touch to indicate your turns and changing of the lanes properly and to turn off at the right time rather than start confusing the other motorists around you with you kind of just indicating left and then right and then not turning it off properly. I have gotten used to a similar, similarly assembled stock, uh, the free hanging one in my Subaru Outback as I've been driving it now for over six months. However, I still have to say that I still make occasional mistakes and I start indicating uh, in the opposite direction while all I wanted to do was just to turn off the indicator that was on before. It is very delicate, it is very finicky and a normal stock that you move with your finger and it fixates in a certain position, classic way so to speak, would have been so 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 much better. I still think that this is one of the really obvious, not arguable, stupid things that they've put into tank 300. Be aware of that before you buy it. Number eight, relatively small and rather useless boot for anyone who seriously plans to camp in this vehicle. Uh, that is just in terms of, so obviously the form factor is a thing. It is obviously not having much space there with the rear seats even folded and that boot itself, especially when the seats are not folded down. If they are up, there is literally no space. I've heard reports from Russia about this. I've seen it myself. I've kind of tried to imagine how I would fit into this. And the small boot, believe it or not, was one of the very, very, very big factors of why I am not driving Tank 300 myself, why I looked in the direction of something like Subaru Outback. And I'm very happy with it for my, my needs. I do think that the boot is inappropriately rather small, while they left quite a lot of space for the front passenger seats. It's kind of like as if they almost thought about a two-passenger ride always in Tank 300, rather than having it as a family vehicle. I think it's a bit it's a bit stupid. I don't know what they could have done there, but they probably could have done something a little bit better than that. At least I would like to think so, because GWM is a good company. They've done better with other cars. Now, number nine. I'm hearing that there is pretty bad kind of, like not ergonomic as much as just shape factor design of the rear door elements that are going over the fenders. That's where the door is kind of going over the rear fender and it's essentially it exposes a specific part of this plastic layering and this rubbery layering that apparently gets all horribly muddied up if the car, if the vehicle, tank 300, is being used for what it's designed to be used for and that is relatively heavy off-roading which it's more than capable of doing. So apparently it's all very hard to clean out out of so from kind of underneath of those plastic uh, layering sort of uh, little panels there and i haven't done this myself but i have to trust people who are putting these cars through the paces and pretty much every single reviewer who talks about off-roading in tank 300 talks about the horrible design of that rear door keep that in mind finally number 10 something i've experienced firsthand yeah. Limit. And I think it is a horrible, invasive driver monitoring system, which is made even worse by the voiceover, by the invasive voiceover, reminding me of actually my dear mother-in-law, who is much better than that, but I have to use a classic metaphor. It's like a classic mother-in-law that tells you what to do as you drive. Slow down, you exceeding speed limit, do this, do that. As a good responsible driver, you shouldn't have to deal with that kind of stuff. It's more aggravating, more distracting, more annoying, like flat out more annoying for you than helpful, in my humble opinion. On top of that, I am unaware of GWM changing generally the emergency lane keeping system that is underneath of that driver monitoring system and part of the whole ADAS of GWM package that will uh, kind of wrestle you very, very uh, strongly to keep you in the lane even if you are indicating the intention to turn. That at least I experienced firsthand and spoke about it plentifully on my channel about my Haval H6. I, during my test drives of Tank 300, I would say it felt a bit softer. So let's give, once again, credit where it's due. Maybe they made it a little less sensitive and a bit softer than in Haval. However, 
Until proven otherwise, I'm going to record this video with this 10th point loud and clear. And this is it, my friends, 10 things that I strongly dislike about Tank 300, at least the models that we have here in Australia. Maybe in China it's different, maybe somewhere else it's different, but these models that we have here are simply not particularly adequate in these specific things we talked about. Now is your turn to tell me what you think. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you own Tank 300? Do you agree with some of these points? Are they a little bit more superficial? I kind of did hard work of research and preparation for this video to make sure that they are not superficial. It's not just commenting on the shape of the wheel arches or something BS like that that you are not interested in. No, it's real things. I think so. But you let me know what you think. And subscribe to the channel for more similar videos because I review cars. I'm passionate about cars. I'm a, not a professional reviewer, but I'm a consumer. I owned a lot of Chinese vehicles, including those from GWM, my Haval H6, and I wanted tank, but I didn't get it for a good reason. And one of these reasons is among those 10 I told you about today. I'll talk to you next week about something else cars related and goodbye for now.